Daniel, this spot looks particularly suitable for recording. Sure, Atrid, go on. Um, may I inquire about what it is that you are wearing? Oh, this is my dreamy glasses from July Academy gift box. Are those glasses aiding you in any way? Well, that pink tint gives me a glimmer of hope that Warner Bros will actually do something for us. Oh, Daniel, the real world doesn't work like that. I propose you take off those glasses and face the truth in its purest form. Oh, you might be right. By the way, Daniel, have you signed the petition requesting NetEase Games to take over Warner Bros. servers? Petition? Never heard of that. Let me enlighten you then. Signing a petition in support of something can be a powerful way to express your viewpoint and bring about desired changes. In this case, it could be a valuable step towards seeing NetEase Games take over the Warner Bros. servers. Firstly, go to the website change.org and fill out all the necessary information, such as your name, surname, and email address. Step two is to press the confirmation button in the email you received, thereby confirming your petition. The optional step three is to share the petition on your preferred social media platforms, which could help further increase its visibility and support. For those interested in signing the petition, I have provided a link in the description below that you can access easily. Additionally, there is a QR code available for scanning from your mobile device if you find it more convenient. Once again, let me remind you that signing the petition is not mandatory. It is an individual choice. Thanks, I'll sign it today. Glad to do my part. You know, Uhtred, I'm not really feeling up to recording any advanced guidelines on NetEase servers. Most of our friends don't even have their hands on Crucio cards yet. It's ridiculous. I know you're upset about the current situation, Daniel, but I want to share something important. I've been investigating our predicament with Warner Bros. And I think you should hear about it. All right, that would match my mood. In order to save time, I sought assistance from ChatGPT to efficiently search online and gather the necessary information. My initial question was to ask if there was information available online about the terms of the Warner Bros. user agreement. The response to my first question was positive, which led me to move on to the issue of refunds. I discovered that many types of digital content, including virtual items, in-game currency, and other digital purchases, are non-refundable when made on Warner Bros. games. I also found that when you buy digital content, such as virtual items or in-game currency, you don't truly own them. Instead, Warner Bros. Games grants you a license to use them. The company retains ownership of all digital content. I want to pause for a moment and remind those who are planning to spend money on games like this, with gambling elements, to always thoroughly read the user agreement. Remember, money doesn't fall out of the sky. Whether you earn it yourself or it comes from your parents, it's still important to understand what you're getting into before spending it. I proceeded to explore what options are available for refunds when the servers are about to be shut down. I discovered a clause in the agreement that states the company has the right to modify, suspend, or discontinue the game or service at any time without liability, which usually indicates that users are not entitled to refunds. Additionally, if your refund request is denied, you can also check with the payment provider, such as your credit card company, PayPal, or others, to see if there are any dispute mechanism options specifically for digital purchases. Indeed, that's why we're occasionally able to secure refunds for our recent purchases, thanks to the flexible refund policies of the Play Market platform. I also asked if these terms, including the non-refundable digital purchases and the ability of the company to alter or shut down the game at any time, specifically applied to Harry Potter Magic Awakened. As indicated in Harry Potter, Magic Awakens official user agreement or terms of service, purchases of virtual items, in-game currency and other digital content are generally considered non-refundable, and this policy would apply to the discontinuation of the game's servers as well. By willingly making these purchases, we have implicitly accepted that Warner Bros or other companies may keep our money without any chance of getting it back if the game's servers are closed down, or if the game is discontinued. Moving on. I inquired about the possibility of transferring players from Warner Bros. servers to those managed by NetEase. The response was a clear no because of the different policies held by Warner Bros. and NetEase. Transferring player data between these two companies would pose complex legal and privacy challenges, plus it would require explicit consent from the players involved. I then questioned if any public reaction or public demand could potentially sway the decision. The answer was not particularly satisfactory. 
While public resonance can sometimes play a role in a company's decision-making, the process of transferring data between Warner Bros. games and NetEase is complicated and unlikely to result in a direct transfer. However, public pressure might lead to the companies considering some alternative solutions. And the alternative solutions they may consider, based on public pressure, are not what we players actually need. I then wanted to know if there are any game companies that actually take their players' wishes into account and support player transfers. The answer included examples of game companies known for their player-focused approach, including Blizzard Entertainment, World of Warcraft, Riot Games, League of Legends, Sony, PlayStation Network, Epic Games, Fortnite, and Square Enix Final Fantasy XIV. It's good to know that while content transfer is complex and unlikely, it's not impossible. The examples given, such as Blizzard Entertainment, Riot Games, Sony, Epic Games, and Square Enix, show that although it's challenging, some companies have successfully implemented data migration strategies in situations where the benefits, like retaining a large player base or facilitating a smooth transition to a new platform, outweigh the challenges involved. It's clear there's something seriously wrong with Warner Bros. games when it comes to their policies and decisions regarding player data and game transfers. Then, I inquired if Warner Bros. games are experiencing a decline in revenue that might be impacting their decisions. Yes, Warner Bros. games has had some financial difficulties recently due to the failure of some major projects like Suicide Squad, Kill the Justice League, which was meant to be a live service but underperformed heavily. This is one of the reasons for the decline in their revenue. While I was recording this video, I incidentally received a promotional email promoting the pre-order of the Quidditch Champions game by Warner Bros. Games. Isn't it a bit of an ironic and even humorous situation? Warner Bros. Games is closing one Harry Potter game only to introduce another one, which, as it happens, seems to be leaving their loyal fanbase feeling quite frustrated. What we can do is teach them a lesson by purchasing the game and then requesting a refund, along with leaving a negative review. Revenge, as they say, is a dish best served cold. Given everything we've investigated, it is recommended not to invest money or time in companies that employ false strategies and harm their player base. Additionally, it is important to closely read user agreements before making any purchases in any game. While I was assisting only the Android users to install the NetEase version of the game, I couldn't help but feel a sense of betrayal as I realized I was leaving our iOS using friends behind. Although there is a video provided by Kang, some players are finding it challenging to follow the guidelines and understand what's happening on screen. We're going to use Kang's video on the iOS installation process and add some extra details so that everyone can follow along easily. We really hope that Kang won't mind and will understand that we're just trying to make it even clearer for our viewers. All right, let's get started. Step one, go to the settings menu and head to the media and purchases section. Next, tap on the media and purchases button once more. After the floating menu appears, look for the view account button and press it. In the account settings, press the country region option. Next, select the change country or region button. From the drop down menu, select Japan as the country. After choosing Japan, press the agree button in the top right corner. If you don't see the none option in the payment method menu, hit the back button located at the top left corner of the screen and try again. Now, in the payment method menu, press the none button. Now, in the billing name section, type one random Japanese letter in the phonetic last name and phonetic first name fields. Similarly, type a random Japanese letter in the street and country fields. For the prefecture field, select Tokyo from the options. For the zip field, enter 150001 Fu. For the phone field, go ahead and enter a random set of numbers. Once you've entered the random numbers in the phone field, go ahead and tap the next button located in the top right corner of the screen. Now, open up the app store and type in Harry Potter in the search bar. Next, you'll want to locate the Harry Potter 
Magic Awakened app by NetEase in the search results. Once you've successfully downloaded and installed the game, you can restore all your previous settings as if nothing ever happened. As you proceed through the installation, you'll be prompted to select one of the NetEase servers. When you start the game and get to the title screen, press the server name button. From there, click through all the available servers while paying attention to their ping rates to find the one with the best connection. Remember, the lower the ping rate, the better the connection to the server. Look for the server with the lowest ping to ensure you have a stable game connection. Oh, wow. We've been having this conversation for more than 10 minutes now. They say time flies when you're having fun, and it's definitely true. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe for more content, and we'll see you in the next episode. Seriously, who in their right mind would want to play that ridiculously silly game called Quidditch? Ha! Cassandra, go back to your garden. All right, ladies. No need for a fight now. Let's keep things friendly, shall we?